Welcome, everybody. I'm Neil Cavuto. And now it is Tea Partiers who want to dunk the president because no matter how he tried today, they are still not the better of the most powerful and feared agency on the planet going after them. Whether he or anyone in his administration told the IRS to do it, my next guest has had it. Indeed, he predicted it, dealt with it, and now wants to speak out more about it. Mark Levin on the phone with us now. Mark, what did you make of the president's attempted explanation uh, of all of this? You know, the president uh, never explains anything. He never takes a responsibility for anything. He's never accountable for anything. The fact of the matter is his internal revenue service, going back to March 2010, we now know, started targeting Tea Party, hatred organizations, 912 organizations, and um, this was in the news. I mean, it, it was clearly in the news, and by, the, by, by a year later, 2011, that's how I became aware of it, among other places. And for him to continue to act like he doesn't know what's going on around him and he just happens to be president of the United States is absolutely unacceptable. And I'm going to tell you something else that bothers me, Neil. Why didn't Congress a year ago use its power to issue subpoenas, its power to call witnesses, its power to put people under oath and hold them uh, uh, in contempt or, or uh, pass them on for perjury and so forth. Why didn't Congress dig into this? You know, they had a hearing, and it happened to come up at a hearing, and they're writing letters. Congress has a lot of power. We have a separation of powers issue here. There were scores of Tea Party groups and others saying, we are being abused, we are being threatened, look at these forms, and the best they can do is sit around and wait for the Treasury Department. I, I say... Uh, 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 Congress uh, let the, you know, now they're all running around and saying, you know, we're going to hold hearings. Where was Susan Collins a year ago? Where was Carl Levin a year ago? Frankly, where were the Republicans in the House a year ago? Very timid, very passive. This is serious business, the Internal Revenue Service harassing people. You know, um, it would seem like the president wants where this has gone past of what the IRS supposedly allegedly did. The IRS admitted it, apologized for it on Friday. Now, when this type of action happens, when the IRS admits something like this, apologizes for it, regrets it, however you want to characterize it, they're obviously trying to get in front of something that someone else had discovered or got proof of. You come to mind that you had been bringing this to, to, to people's attention when everyone thought it was crazy and it couldn't be. Now it's proven to be. So the only question is, who would authorize something like that? I mean, are it a few agents who are running rogue? or, or What do you think? Well, first of all, here's what happened in our case. Um, we, we got information that the uh, Internal Revenue Service was asking uh, Tea Party organizations these outrageous questions with these outrageous forms uh, about family members, about associations, I mean, real KGB-type stuff, and we flipped out. And uh, we had to make a decision as lawyers. Are we going to represent the individual Tea Party groups and fight with the Internal Revenue Service? Or are we going to go to the top, to the Treasury Department, to the Inspector General for the Tax Administration? And I checked with a number of experts. I'm an old Justice Department guy. And we said, it's not good enough just to represent individual groups. We need to investigate the Internal Revenue Service. That's what led us to send our complaint to the Treasury Department, which, by the way, did a good job, I have to say, the uh, law enforcement wing of the Treasury Department. Certainly it's not a couple of Treasury agents uh, in Cincinnati who came up with this. This affected several states, scores of organizations, and we now know, because they're leaking like a sieve on the hill to cover their own trail up there, that this went all the way up to uh, senior officials within the IRS, and they're in full cover-up mode right now at the IRS. Now, when, when they harass these organizations, Tea Party or other conservative organizations, the, we're told initially Margaret started questioning their tax-exempt status, but it went well beyond that, right? What kind of stuff would they do? Well, initially, uh, groups were coming in seeking a tax-exempt status uh, in March, April 2010, as we now know, and uh, they were coming under horrific scrutiny. I'll give you some examples. They wanted to know if... Uh, individual board members had taken certain positions publicly, and if they took positions publicly, what were they? That's an outrageous violation of the First Amendment. Nobody ever asks media matters or, uh, or any of those left-wing groups these kinds of questions. Uh, they wanted to know their vendor list, how much money they paid their vendors, what they purchased from their vendors. They're, 
Uh, this has nothing to do with whether an organization gets a tax exempt status. They wanted to know about their associations. Uh, if anybody was thinking of running for public office, if board members had run for public office, it was a clear effort to intimidate and to prevent these organizations from getting the tax exempt status they have a right to under the Internal Revenue Code. And we should keep in mind that any time any individual gets an envelope from the Internal Revenue Service or, you know, God forbid, a phone call, um, it is intimidating. It, it, it has the desired effect in and of itself, right? Well, and the thing is, yes, and the thing is, People were speaking out, groups were speaking out. Uh, the President of the United States, doesn't he read a newspaper? Doesn't he hear reports? Congress, uh, did they hold a hearing on this? No, a question came up at a hearing and they questioned the Internal Revenue Commissioner. So, uh, you know, for, for all that's being said today, how outrageous this is, it was outrageous a year ago, too. Yeah. You know, Mark, though, um, it would almost seem too blatant, if not too stupid, uh, to. To, to have it inside the administration actually barking orders to higher-ups at the IRS, do this, follow this group, look into the legality, uh, tax-wise or otherwise, about this group and its, its, its status, the filing status. Um, but dumber things have happened in the past. I mean, do you suspect, as, just as a, as, a, as a lawyer and a pretty damn good one, that this, this went beyond just some rogue IRS agents? Do I think it went beyond a couple of, of uh, revenue agents in Cincinnati? You bet I do. Uh, how high it goes, I have no idea. Whether Congress is capable of getting to the bottom of it, I have no idea. Uh, but, I mean, that, that, to, to react to that pressure, if someone is telling a higher up, why don't you look into these groups? I don't know how the IRS works, but uh, that alone would, 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 would raise flags among anyone working at the IRS. We, we are targeting, apparently, a political group and or groups right now and that doesn't fly. That, that doesn't seem to make sense to me. Um, I'm, I'm talking about from the perspective of an IRS agent or, or a district head, you know, looking into something, that the order itself, if there are, are following orders, it, it doesn't sound right. Are you saying there aren't stupid people in government? There's stupid people all over the place. I forgot that. Things. That was a very stupid point I made. There. No, it wasn't. But, but, the, but the point is, we... It, it, I don't think we should make a decision and say, you know, I can't believe people are capable of this, or I can't believe that this would be... They need to investigate this. And the way you investigate this is use the full powers that Congress has in its oversight powers to issue subpoenas, to get documents, to uh, interview people, to pose them, uh, to bring people in and, uh, and make them testify under oath and to do it publicly because the government belongs to us, and that includes the Internal Revenue Service. So I'll tell you something else. The president should have apologized to these Tea Party and conservative groups. Members of Congress who, who've been thumbing their nose at them should do the same. And again, I know this is unpopular. The Republican Party that has nothing but contempt for the conservative movement and these Tea Party organizations now coming to their rescue, they owe us an apology too. Because in the House of Representatives, I want to say for a third time, what they did was impotent. What they did is not print. They're going to hold a hearing on Friday, I understand. Okay. We'll take it a year late, but we'll still take it. But again, I want to tell you, there are a couple of, uh, of law enforcement folks at the Treasury Department and the Inspector General's office who did their job. When we wrote them and we laid the matter out, they came and they interviewed me, and we gave them everything we had, and they interviewed a number of other people. And there are other legal groups like Jay Sekulow's group who deserve credit, too, for representing a number of these groups. But... The fact of the matter is, there's a reason why people are so negative on the federal government. They should be. Yeah. Mark Levin, it would have been a very different story had he's been some left-wing groups maybe targeted, but uh, neither here nor there. The controversy is now, and the uproar is now as well. Uh, Mark Levin, thank you very, very much. Meanwhile, John